Imagine if developers of the world were using natural numbers for their versioning. So they were releasing new versions as 1, 2, 3 and so on. So if you had a version 5 of the software and you were about to install version 7, you would have no idea what are you getting. Bug fixes? New features? <laughs> Maybe new bugs and issues? Or maybe this software will not even work on your machine anymore after some incompatibility issue. You'd have to go and carefully check the patch and release notes in order to figure out what are you getting. No one wants to do that. That's why the proposal has been made to use a public contract between the producers and the consumers of the software. And it's been called semantic versioning or semver for short. It is a contract on how do you name your versions of the software and right now it became popular across multiple programming languages ecosystems. And today we're going to learn that. Semantic versioning format is pretty simple. So let's look at the list of all uh, versions for the Lodash NBM package here. The format is the dot separated patch minor and major version. This is a patch. This is a minor version and this is a major version. This doesn't make a lot of sense uh, unless you think about it from the different angle. Patch is for bug fixes. Minor version is for changes that are in new features but backwards compatible, meaning they don't break anything. And the major version is for breaking changes. Some important rules to remember if you are creator of the software. If your code is private, meaning there is no one using it, it's in the development, you should use zero for your major version. But if I create a, a new empty NPM package, you can see that the version is 1.0.0. And this brings us to the rule number two. If your code is public, meaning that there are people using it, your major version should start from at least one. That's why by default, new NPM package has a 1.0.0. Because if you push it to the NPM registry, people will find it and consume it, meaning it's public. Rule number three, always increment a new version of the software. Even if you fix a typo or a tiny little bug, you should have a patch version incremented. So if you had 1.0.0, you should have 1.0.1. Versions are compared by numeric value, not alphabetically. So 4.9 goes before than 4.10. You can have a pre-release version. For example, you can see that we can have version 100 RC1. Pre-release version is less in comparison than the normal version. Now let's talk about the rules to remember if you are a consumer of the software. One. Remember that getting only minor or patch versions are not a guarantee that a software will work. It just shows that author thinks that it should work and not break anything, assuming the author even knows and following the December guidelines. To get no updates, you could use the exact match syntax. So I can say 100 and I will get exactly version 100. To get only patch updates, meaning bug fixes, you could use something like that. You could say 417 and you'll get all the patch updates in there. Or you can say 417.x. I think it's slightly more readable. Or you can say a tilde sign at 417 or 473. To make it more visible, I'll show you here. So you can get, have a 417 or 417x, or you can say Yield sign or 17 or maybe from 17.3. To get new non-breaking changes, also known as new features, you can use the syntax of just a major version. Or you could say major version dot x. Also, you can use a circumflex sign saying uh, give me everything above this minor version. To get major updates, you could use the asterisk asterisk syntax, meaning give me everything, but don't do this, it's very risky. Two more things you should be aware of. Not getting patch updates, so locking it up like that, 
could lead to a security problem where issue has been found and then later fixed in, let's say, subsequent uh, patch updates, but you lock in it so you're not getting any updates, so you still use the vulnerable version. Fixing it to start getting updates mean that you're also vulnerable because now you can possibly get an update of the compromised package that uh, has a security vulnerability because the package owner went mad or maybe the package has been hijacked. It happened in the past and will happen again in the future. It's a, a good idea to always include uh, something like NPM audit or some other security scanning tool as part of your pipeline to catch cases like that. That's it. Now you know Semver. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button and check out my other videos and see you next time.